to John 6, after these things, Jesus went over uh, the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a uh, great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat with his disciples. <clears throat> now the Passover, the feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test them or test him for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered and said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little to eat. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, said to Jesus, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? So, so we know that pretty much w w we would know about this account because uh, this is one of the few records we have in all four Gospels. And there are lots of things that the Synoptic Gospels have. The Synoptic Gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So there are a lot of things that Synoptic Gospels record that the Gospel of John doesn't record. And there are things that the Gospel of John records that the Synoptic doesn't have. But this, one, this is one of the few things. It's probably just with the significance and how memorable it was. It's recorded in all four Gospels, the feeding of the 5,000. Verse 10, uh, then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. So even though there are four Gospels, they all let us know it's 5,000 men. And when it says men, it's talking about males, not females, just men. And so scholars estimate with the females, and the children included, there would have been about 20,000 people. So I have never seen 20,000 people um, like in a crowd. I, I may have seen maybe a thousand or something at like a graduation or something. But uh, 5,000, 20,000. Yeah, only mainly through like movies or like, you know, media, we may have seen those kinds of things. But usually, uh, yeah, so it just it's a large number, really large number. So think about this. You have about 20,000 people, and you have five barley loaves, and you have two fishes. It's not going to feed them. Some people can probably eat all that by themselves. I'm kidding. Um, maybe some, but... Um, so he has them sit down, and then 11... And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks. So this is this is emphasized. So when it comes to praying before eating meals, it's from the Bible. So when it says when Jesus had given thanks, it's it's prayer. And actually John like says it again, interestingly later. But um this is where we get uh praying before we eat. It's not a traditional thing, it's a biblical thing. So after he had given thanks, he uh, distributed them to those sitting down and likewise of the fish, as many as, look at that. I have that underlined, as many as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fra fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. So there's no wasting food. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those, uh, those people, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. So guys, just think about it. Uh, 20,000 people that I have never seen before. Such a large, large number. The Lord starts out with five loaves, barley bread. And I'm, I'm pro barley because it's pretty healthy. But uh, And then two fish. That's good protein right there. Um, and maybe some omega-3. It depends on the fish, but uh, this healthy food, very small quantity. The Lord pretty much, whether you call it multiplying it or like just creating, this is obviously supernatural because it multiplied somehow. And does this remind you of anything? Anything similar? Some Something to do with food or ingredients, food? increasing see you're supposed to have the old testament background because the old testament is the foundation for the new testament 
Many times, if you don't have the Old Testament down, you can't understand the New, Te New Testament correctly. You can't notice the significances in the New Testament unless you have the Old Testament laid down. So in the multiplying part, remember uh, he's called Elijah and Elisha, Elia and Elisa. So Elijah and Elisha, if you have First Kings background, Elijah appears, uh, First Kings, I think 17, 16, 17, 18-ish. Elijah is very well known he prays that there would be no rain for three and a half years because at that time israel apostatized I israel started becoming pagan they had become paganites for a long time and they were worshiping baal along with god yahweh and baal was known to be a god of storm the god that's responsible for rain because rain of course we, we know it's essential for crops i mean now, today, in the time period we're living in, we're not as dependent on rain because many times people reserve water and they, they you know, store up water. But this is, uh, what, B.C. times, and this is first century, Elijah's time, you know, it's like uh, B.C. times. You don't, you can't do that. You're absolutely dependent on rain. But this pagan god Baal, he supposedly is responsible for rain. And so that made Elijah absolutely just burn with jealousy because of his passion for God. And by the way, we're supposed to have that passion too. And so he prays to God, God, don't let it rain. Because that indicated Baal was defeated. And that's why he wasn't able to get rain. So with that background, Elijah prays, don't let it rain, O God. And God lets it stop. But I'll just go real quick. Uh, so in First Kings, because this is just, these things are important to understand. You know, many times uh, Christians know, oh yeah, the fe feeding of the 5,000, 4,000, they know about that story, but they don't have the background to know really the significance. So, First King 1? First King 17. So in First King no. se 17, are you guys there? Yep, I am. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, this is the king of Israel at that time. Um, this is a bad king, Ahab. As Yahweh God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain in these years except at my word. If you if you back up just a little bit, if you go to chapter 16, verse 30, in 1630, now this King Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of Yahweh more than all who were before him. And it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took as wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke Yahweh God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. So this is the background. And I explained about the whole uh, Baal. So this Elijah, a prophet of God, he tells him, as Yahweh, God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. <laughs> then um, the word of Yahweh came to him saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide it by the brook uh, Cherith, Kereth, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook as I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So God supplies him with water and food. But then... Um, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, and uh, he went and stayed by the brook uh, Kereth, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of Yahweh came to him, saying, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he, Elijah arose and went to <clears throat> Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As Yahweh your God lives. So she knows based on how he's dressed, maybe how he looks. This is a pro this is a prophet of um that country over there, um, Israel, as your God, Yahweh lives, 
I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. So basically, we're going to have our last meal and we're going to die. So you ask me to bring a little bit of bread or cake, whatever this cake thing is. Well, excuse me, um, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So bring some bread for me. But uh, we're almost out of flour and we're almost out of oil. And we're going to have our last meal and pretty much die after that. Like This is the context of this time where you can die of starvation. 13. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For, thus says Yahweh God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day Yahweh sends rain on the earth. So there's a lot of background I can't get into because of time, but this is absolutely amazing. God was judging Israel for their apostasy and giving no rain. But God uses a pagan, a Gentile, non-Israelite widow. Remember widows background? They're like the most weak and vulnerable and they have nothing. This widow of a pagan land, she is going to have her last meal and die soon. But this prophet of God comes and says, look, make me cake first. But he's kind of testing her faith. Make me the cake first, because this is what my God says. Verse 14, Yahweh God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day Yahweh sends rain on the earth. It's supernatural. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and her household ate for many days. 16. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of Yahweh, which he spoke by Elijah. So, remember, how long was going to be the rain, uh, the, the drought? Well, we, we know it was three and a half years. So, for three and a half years, supernaturally, God had the oil continually, like, basically, supernaturally increase. And the bin of flour, it just multiplied whatever, however you take it. God supernaturally did that. So when you, when you have this kind of background, which you're supposed to, when you see Jesus doing this, you know Jesus is the greater prophet. Elijah was known as like Elijah and Elisha. They were known to be like the most, the, the prophets that did the most supernatural things because they, they raise the dead. They do the multiplying of food. The kind of like split the river kind of a thing. Moses was definitely involved in the supernatural. But Elijah and Elisha, they were like on par. They were at, at like the same level, if not higher. But this Yeshua comes along and he does this. And uh, I'll just I'll just go to one more thing, okay? So in John 6 again, oh, okay. 6.15, therefore... When Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea toward uh, Capernaum, and it was already dark. And Jesus did not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. So when he had rowed, excuse me, when they, they're in a boat, they rode about three or four miles. They saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat. And they were afraid. Of course, they're scared. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. And they were willing to receive him into the boat. And immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. This one also, uh, 
So turn back to <laughs> Second Kings. This time Second Kings. So earlier was First Kings, but go to Second Kings. Second Kings six. This will be the end for today. In Second Kings six, can somebody? I mean, I guess I guess, I'll just read quickly. Are you guys there? Yeah. In Second Kings six. Now that earlier that was Elia or Elijah. This is his disciple, Elisha or um, Elisha. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisa, uh, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make a place where we may dwell. So let's, we're going to build a house. And we, you, you need to cut wood to, to make a house. So they said, Go. He answered, Go. Then one said, Please uh, consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I'll go. So Elijah Elisha says, I'll go with you guys. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. And as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So probably because they can't afford axes, they had to borrow it. So this is a disaster because, man, these probably weren't cheap. A whole axe. I mean, for America, you know, it's whatever, but put yourself in this context. Verse 6. So the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So Elisha cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. Therefore, he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand, reached out his hand and took it. Why did I come to this passage? So, does iron float? No, it always sinks. Yeah. Do people float in water? Do you get the point now? This prophet of God did something supernatural in this situation where he had iron axe head supernaturally come up to the surface, float. Do you see why I came here? Jesus doesn't let, Jesus doesn't have some object float, some other object. He himself walked on water. Do you see the superiority? And since we're here anyways, if you just go to uh, chapter 4, verse 42, in, in 442, again, this is Elijah, Elisha. Then a man came from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of God bread, hmm, bread, hmm, that sounds familiar, bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley bread. Oh, that sounds kind of familiar. 20 loaves of barley bread and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, what? Shall I set this before 100 men? He said again, give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says Yahweh, they shall eat and have some left over. Does that sound familiar? So he set it before them and they ate and had some left over according to the word of Yahweh. I think you would know why I came here. This Elisha, he receives 20 loaves of barley bread and he says, give it to 100 men. And the servant's like, are you kidding here? What? 20 loaves? 100 men? That's like ridiculous. But hey, this is the word of God. They're going to eat and have left over. The Lord Jesus takes less. He takes five loaves and two fish. And he doesn't feed 100 men. He feeds 5,000. Not counting the women and children. Jesus takes less and he feeds more with leftover. 
So basically, the Lord Jesus is the greater prophet. The other prophets, they did supernatural miracles. He, One of them had iron axe float supernaturally. Jesus himself, he walked on water. So when you have these Old Testament backgrounds, you can know how much greater Jesus is in every way. So any uh, thoughts, questions? And like, remember, uh, you know, the prophet Elijah, he prays and he prays earnestly that it would not rain. Jesus, he tells the storm, uh, peace be still, and it obeys him. So, we'll pray and get going. Lord, thank you for your word. Uh, just, it's magnificent. Um, there's such truth, and Lord, uh, there's just so much indeed. May we have such reverence and know who you are, that this is from you. This record is from you, and uh, when we study it, we know that it is from you. You make it very evident how people can't come up with this. Uh, there's just too much in it. Lord God, the greater Elijah, the greater Elisha, the greater Moses, the greater Joshua, how you have planned it all. Lord God, may people bow down before you before it's too late. For one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord you are Yahweh to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for this time, and may we uh, live for you rightly. In Jesus' name, amen.